We're going to break down Thursday's Sweet 16 games. We're going to preview opening day for Major League Baseball. And of course, we're going to react to some craziness around sports. This is the Thursday almost live edition of Crane & Company. You know, L.A. has the largest and most diverse collection of Ice Age fossils in the world. Did you just want to throw? You just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> I'm glad I can do that. cool things we're, too. We're all now I better having that. known that. But David, <laughs> what's Indeed. the first game on the docket? Let's start with the games we're going to be at. Why yes. not? Yeah. Alabama four seed against North Carolina, the number one seed, and this is in the West Region. Yeah, look, this is a game, and and it's easy to sit here and point out and say. You know, Nick Pringle's going to have to play the game of his life to be able to compete with, with what Baycott's going to do. You obviously have Grant Nelson, who's kind of a tweener. I mean, I think the style of play uh, is behooves Alabama. North Carolina wants to run. I do think the difference in this North Carolina team this year, though, not that they're not powerful offensively. I mean, getting Cormac Ryan over from Notre Dame help. We know who RJ is. We know who Armando is. Uh, and they seem to be coming along as a team. But defensively, I think this North Carolina team is a little bit better than the ones we've seen in the past. Mark Sears, I mean, going up against RJ is one of the best March guard matchups you're going to find. I do think it is high scoring. I love the over in this game. I'm just, the, the difference is in the front court. And Alabama struggled down the stretch with teams that, that play physical, even though, you know, they did get past Grand Canyon, who's pretty scrappy. But this, uh, this ain't Grand Canyon. Give me North Carolina. Well, like we were talking about this week, it doesn't matter who you beat and it doesn't matter how you beat them. If you're in the Sweet 16, you're in the Sweet 16, even though we've seen Alabama give up 100 points a lot this year. A lot of that is the style of play they that they have on offense. You know, like, like Jake was talking about, Mark Sears, uh, the second highest scoring um, player in the SEC throughout the season. 21 and a half points per game, Blaine. Going up against R.J. Davis, 21.3 points per game. Yeah. What are you more excited about? That guard matchup, or to see if Armando Baycott breaks the floor again like he did last time we were at the Look, I love watching bigs get into action, man. And Armando Baycott's one of the funnest to do. This is going to be such a great matchup to watch. Right now, top 10 defense if you're North Carolina. Top 10 offense if you're Alabama. The magic number if you're Alabama is 80 points. If you can get to 80 points. North Carolina losses this season. Five out of six teams have scored 80 points against them. So, Bama, really? that's your magic number. Flip it on the other side. Bama struggles. Struggles with top 10 defenses. Really good defense. Four of his five losses has been from top 10 defenses. So right now, if you're Alabama, you want to run. But I don't know if you want to run too much. Uh, I, I really don't. You want to get Baycott moving. You have to. Sears has to be your guy. He has to show up in the biggest moments, which he had throughout his career. So if Bama can, if Bama can put points, they have to shoot the three well. We know that. But if they can get to that magic number 80, if it is high scoring, I would lean Bama. What do well, you think about that? Well, Bama can win this game. That, that's, I'm not doubting whether Bama can win this game. The question is who can win this game in the most ways. I think that North Carolina has a couple more paths to win this game than Alabama does. But if Mark Sears is shooting the ball well and they're not turning the ball over, I think they're going to play how they play. Uh, I think the way they, Nate Oates sees it and he's smart – to do it is we're going to play the way that we play. Uh, if you play a similar style to us, that's fine. We're just going to be better than you at it. They want to shoot threes and they want to get shots at the rim. The mid-range is kind of a no-no for them. What's you know What do they say about the mid-range? If you're going to shoot it, it sure as hell better go in. But it's going to, it's going to take the whole band for Bama. Mm -hmm. Grant Nelson's going to have to be able to stretch and shoot the three. The way he did a little bit, you know, we saw, uh, you know, in the SEC tournament, him keeping him in the game. Uh, we've seen him be able to go shoot that corner three, especially Sam Walters is going to have to shoot well. Reitzel's going to have to shoot well. Ryland Griffin's going to have to shoot well. And Estrada is going to have to start being more of a threat from the three. Bama beats you in waves from the perimeter. It can't just be Mark Sears has to shoot 55% from three, and we got to hope to God he draws 15 fouls. You, you've got to have all, and I know Reitzel's been beat up. He's been hit in the head. He's, he's been in. He's been out. Uh, but Alabama's good enough to win this game. I just think North Carolina has more paths to be able to. You got, if you're Alabama, you got to start start hot. If you come out and like the way you did against Grand Canyon, North Carolina will mop you off the floor. Right now, R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis is four straight games with 20-plus points. He's that's, cooking. That's his longest since earlier in the season. We had eight, uh, a streak of eight with 20-plus points. If R.J.'s cooking and Baycott's cooking at the same time, it's going to be really tough for Alabama because Baycott's averaging 13 rebounds a game. The line right now is Alabama plus four and a half. That seems about right. The over-under is 173 and a half. 
half. Alabama's team total points, 84 and a half right now. For North Carolina, it's 89 and a half. So Vegas thinks they need, Alabama needs to get a little bit north of that 80 number, at least for. I, I'm going to take that over. I think it's the best bet uh, on the board. Mm, but I kind of, I like the under in that game. Yeah, you hit on Alabama yeah. under this past week. In Grand right? Canyon, yeah. Congrats. That's probably the only time it hit. This yeah, season. I know. So, all right. My Let's stay bit. in the West region. We're going to be uh, in LA for this game as well. This is Clemson, six seed, the second lowest seed to make the to make the Sweet 16 after North Carolina State, up against the two seed Arizona. We had talked all season. Arizona is either the type of team to get knocked out in the first round or go on a Final Four run. Well, it's, it, I think a lot of it obviously depends on how Caleb Love's playing. Not to say that you know Ballo's not not important. He's obviously very important what Arizona does. Larson's, I mean, they basically have a NATO meeting every time they're on the court. I, I just still have a hard time trusting Arizona to be able to survive the game where they don't play well, when Caleb Love is taking a lot of bad shots. We saw it down the stretch against USC and, and Oregon, and, and really throughout the year where Arizona's kind of fluctuated. And all it takes, you know, Tennessee had their bad game offensively. They were able to win against Texas, didn't shoot well. You can say the same thing for Bama against Grand Canyon. Hell, I could flip it on its head and say the same thing about Houston. Houston's not going to give up 95 points to probably anybody else in the tournament, probably not even close. And they're not also not going to score 100 points. So, so I think there were some anomalies. Can Arizona survive the anomaly? And the way Clemson is playing right now, we talk about balance. This Clemson team, you know, had a come to Jesus meeting with Brad Brownell after the ACC tournament and really them kind of fluttering a little bit down the stretch when they got guys like Shefflin and P.J. Hall and Gerard who came over from Syracuse and Chase Hunter started to look like himself being able to go get a bucket. I just feel like this Clemson team is playing with, with a ton of confidence right now. They led wire to wire against Baylor, and when Baylor made it tight at the end, they were able to make enough plays to move on. I think they're playing with a chip on their shoulder, and they're not a one-trick pony. And I think they're a team that can come back if Arizona does come out in the first half and puts a nice run together. A lot of it is going to be foul trouble. Can Clemson, you know, P.J. Hall fouled out of the last game against Baylor. I know it was late. It was kind of a stupid foul. But if they get in foul trouble down low, Umar Ballo is the guy that can take over the game. I don't know if anybody dunks more angrily than <laughs> Umar Ballo. They do a good job of drawing fouls. But... You know, this Arizona team is a little bit vulnerable to me. And, and right now, I, I don't. I know you're going to talk about the line at the end of it. Uh, I like Clemson to cover. I, I know they're an underdog, but whatever it is, I, I'm, I'm leaning toward Clemson. I wonder if that's still at seven and a half. It last is. Time it I is saw right it. Now. I love Clemson plus seven. New Mexico was one of my favorite double-digit seeds entering the tournament. Oh, I, I saw New Mexico play it. several times this year. Clemson gets past them. Then, not only that, they get past the three seed in Baylor, who were only three seasons removed from winning a national championship. So they've proven that, Clemson has proven they cannot look past a double-digit seed, but then also go beat the best of the best teams. Now they're sitting here plus seven and a half right now against the two seed in Arizona. Yeah, I love Clemson plus seven and a half in this game, and I don't think you'd be crazy to take it money line. Yeah. First thing for Clemson, you brought it up, P.J. Hall's got to stay out of foul trouble. I mean, you had four fouls 19 minutes against the New Mexico game, and you fouled out against Baylor in the 20th minute. And right now, Arizona, I believe, ranks third and free, sh free throw percentage in making. So that's going to be huge. You have to slow the game down if you're Clemson. You can't let Arizona run. Arizona's just up there with Alabama when it comes to running. 17 points on fast break. That's third in the nation. Clemson, slow it down, and you can't foul. Flip it to the other side. Arizona has to be themselves. They're averaging 89 points a game, third best offense in the country, third or second best fast break in the country. They have four guys who are averaging double-digit scoring. It's not just Caleb Love. So if Caleb Love's not on, they have other guys they can go to. Clemson needs to control the tempo of this game, and P.J. Hall can't do anything stupid. Because if he does, they will get run out of the gym. He has to be yeah. in there to be that anchor. Well, a lot of it is you've got to feel, not, and, and they've got a bunch of guys that can score, but we know who's taking the shot when it matters, and it's Caleb Love. Yeah. And if, if you're Clemson, I don't think it's a bad strategy is, you know, let test the waters with Caleb Love a little bit early. If he's missing, don't double him. Don't freak out. Let him shoot Arizona out of a game. He'll do it. I watched him do it, and, and this is his last, you know, I think, you know, with the rules now, you can play 30 years in college, but this is his quote-unquote last NCAA tournament. When he is not shooting well, he will shoot them out of a game, and in a single elimination tournament, Clemson's biggest strength may be Caleb Love shooting them. Uh, could be their biggest weakness. Caleb Love could score 40 points. I'm not saying that, I'm saying either way. When he's cooking, he's Bobby Flay. When he's not, it's, it's one of those shows where they like the kindergartners cook. Just messy. Uh, Clemson, you talked about a money line plus 250 right now, over under 150. Give me Clemson plus seven and a half. 152 is the over under? Yes. <clears throat> mm. 
Hmm. Um, Give me the over. All right, let's go up to the East region. We've been talking about the East region since Selection Sunday, right? Unfortunately, Auburn's not going to be playing against UConn in the Sweet 16 like I had them. It's unfortunate, but UConn will be playing San Diego State, a rematch of last year's championship. Murder. Murder. And I like Ladee. I like Trammell. I like Brian Dutcher, their coach. Like San Diego State, it was a great story last year. This UConn team, you know, not saying that that I don't think UConn has to play really well to win this game. They just have so much. I mean, they have everything. It's an embarrassment of riches. Even their young guys at guard uh, are, are playing like vets. They're physical. They're going to run their stuff. Defensively, they're going to get after you. They do not take a playoff. They do not take a, a set off. They do not take a series off or a game off. This UConn team is inevitable, and I think – you know, San Diego State's going to have to catch pretty much every break possible to be able to win this game, uh, and they're going to have to really slow UConn down. But even if you slow UConn down, I mean, with Klingon and, and, again, the embarrassment of riches they have all over the court, and guys know their role, they understand how to play within themselves, nobody tries to, tries to do too much, but they know when to put their foot on your throat. This is a team that's averaged winning NCAA tournament games in the past two years combined by 22 points. They're not just beating you, they're beating you to death. Mm. Like, this is this is what they're doing. And San Diego State, again, I, I don't think you're you're special, you're just next. And it's just, that, that's where UConn is right now, the best team in the tournament. Vegas is spotting San Diego State 11 points right now. Yeah, and I would take UConn. I would too. And that spread. Look, and I watched him, watched UConn play all year. I watched him play Northwestern. I watched Northwestern not miss a shot. In the second half of that game, they lost. Northwestern lost by 16. This UConn team is every bit a national championship team. From guard to center to bench to coach to fans, they know how to get it done. And if you're San Diego State, what are you known for? Right? You defense. play defense. Yeah. Right? You're giving up 67 points a game. Let me tell you this right Good now. Good luck. Right now, you're going to give up more than that against UConn. Your offense has to show up in this game. And a lot of it's going to have to do, in my opinion, about refereeing the way this game's called. Because if San Diego State can get physical with them, that's the only shot. Well, remember, they don't have Mensa, the big guy they had last year. People forget about that with San Diego State. Ladee was, wasn't even their main guy, but he was a nice nice side dish to the entree. Well, he's the entree now, and he's not exactly a, a big, big, as we like to say. Klingon's just an alien down there. I mean, you, you, he's from planet Zorbula 4. Like, this it, guy's just different. And it's one of those things, like, if you get a guy in foul trouble— you're cooked. Uh, not, not even San Diego State. If you get a guy in UConn and foul Trevor, they're big. He's got another one they can bring off the Yeah, it's just depth. Another one they can bring, bring off the bring in Trevin. Yep, it's just the, they have every box checked when it yep. comes to the The second box. game in the East region is number two seed Iowa State up against number three seed Illinois. Keep in mind, Illinois got past Moorhead State and then got past Duquesne in the second round yep. to get there. Uh, we, we always talk about the importance of how the game is officiated. This, to me, this game, not that it's not important for the other ones. This game will be dictated more by the way it is officiated than, and it'll have more of an effect on the outcome than any of the other games. Why? Well, you have the number one offense in the country in Illinois, yep. and Terrence Shannon, and Domas, and Coleman Hawkins, and Danger's going nuts down low to big number 42. Uh, it's got really sweet feet. I just want to see him pass that one time, because I know he can play left tackle for a long time. Then you look at Iowa State, the number one defensive team in the country. Right? They don't, Lipsy's a nice offensive piece, but it's not a sexy production. Right? And they don't want it to be a sexy production offensively. They get in the gaps. They get physical. They get grimy. They, they want it to be low scoring. Right? You'll, you'll have runs where Iowa State shoots well. you have runs where they get in ruts. And Lipsy's normally the one that, that helps get him out of it, and he runs the show. But it, if they're calling ticky-tack fouls in this game, Illinois is in really, really good shape. I don't know how you stop Terrence Shannon from driving. Yeah. I don't know. NBA player. I, like it's To me, he's the hardest guy to stop driving in the game, not just because of his ability to finish and his burst, but he's got a very good instinct and nuanced ability to draw fouls while still you know, making the and ones and hitting those incredible shots and then still being able to hit the three. But if, if, if we're going to look at the way the game's officiated and the pace, so what's the spread on this one? Do you have it pulled up right there? One and a half. One and a half for what, Iowa State? I believe so. No, yeah, minus one and a half, Iowa State. Minus one. I love Illinois in this game. I'm not going to touch the total because I don't know how it's going to be officiated. Plus 102 Illinois on the money line. Yeah, I, I, I like Illinois in this game because I think t at the end of the day, Iowa State is going to score more than what they're used to scoring. Right? You're, I don't think Illinois is going to go through these stretches where, hey, man, how is there 10 minutes to go in the first half and the score is 8-7 to seven, like we see in some of these Iowa State games. So give me Illinois 
But how the game is officiated, fellas, we always talk about styles making fights. Well, officiating is going to make this fun. Terrence Shannon is so much fun to watch on the court. He it's reminds incredible. me of Jaden Ivey for God. Purdue a couple years ago. Honestly, he could probably start at safety for Illinois. Without a doubt. Yeah. And, and probably go to the NFL. Uh, so, yeah, Blaine, right now, plus one and a half for Illinois, plus 102 on the money line, over under 146 and a half. I think Jake makes a good point. You don't know how the game's going to be officiated. Mm -hmm. Usually, when the best offense goes up against the best defense in any sport, I lean defense. But again, you officiate it one way and not the other. Who knows? Yeah, and I think basketball, it shows more than ever when it comes to officiating. Ah, God, man, the more I look at this game, the more I like Illinois. Um, I got to watch Iowa State versus Washington State. Washington State gave Iowa State problems in that first half. I think it ended 27 to 27. I think Iowa State. Well, it's had, hard to speed uh, Washington State. Yeah, uh, Iowa, uh, Iowa State had a 40 point second half. They came out and win. But to me, I'm looking at Iowa State's bench. Iowa State's bench has a show. One guy I kind of looked at was Curtis Jones, came off the bench for Iowa State and scored 15 points. Mm -hmm. You need guys like that to show up in big moments. I think Illinois, not, I think this is the first time to get this far since 2005, uh, which is surprising on the Illinois basketball team. But they got guys. Terrence Shannon. He's an NBA player. So I would say you're going to have to score. You're going to have to control tempo on defense. You're going to have to be physical but not foul because these guys can get to line. I think the last two games, just from a shooting perspective, they shot 54% and 57%. Mm -hmm. So they're putting in the basket. Illinois knows how to do that, but it's one of those things you have to slow them down. I don't want to overweigh the Big 12 tournament, right? In, in March Madness, you can be guilty of recency bias, and it can get you in a lot of trouble. But – I just have that game against Houston in the Big 12 title game seared in my brain where, where, where Houston scored 41 points. Yeah, and and I understand that. I, I do think when you look at conference tournaments, you've played each other so many times and you know each other so well and everybody knows everybody in the league that once you get to that point in the tournament, this is the third time you've played somebody. I, I think that that makes it a lot easier to prepare, right? But, but I think it can give you some kind of weird games and some weird outcomes. I think Iowa State, Played in a conference, obviously in the Big 12, where they're explosive guys. All the, I mean, it's it's basically the Middle East is so explosive, to be honest with you. But when you when you look at, I don't know if they face some, if they face Terrence Shannon. Like I, I think that's something you just learn as you, as you're going through it. That that's, I, and Demas too with his back to the basket. I mean, as far as guard play, g being able to get that mid range shot off, even if they get stuck, they always seem to be able to find a shot. But yeah, I mean, again, you know we. I guess you always look where you look in, in football at the run game. You know, if, who's going to be able to control the paint? Whoever controls the yeah. paint is going to control the game. It's just you And know, when it comes to, to like so Terrence nice. Shannon, it's one of those things like you can, you can only get adjusted to that type of speed, that type of toughness by playing against it. Yeah, you, right? you learn as you go. You learn as you go. That's the only way. You can't yeah. teach that, right? You can't prepare a guy for how fast somebody is. So I think I, I'm leaning Illinois in this game. Mm. Can't wait. Well, regardless of whether you're, where you're leaning, if you're betting on sports, you need to be using betonline.ag. Is it overs? Is it unders? Right? Is there prop bets? Even though the NCAA is trying to ban them right now, we, we don't we don't agree. Fight with back. That. Hashtag fight back. Yeah. Hashtag fight back. Uh, and then also go to hashtag betonline.ag to place your bets today. Whether it's MLB, NHL, we got tons of stuff coming up right around the corner, and that's going on right now. The women's tournament as well. College baseball. All that, use promo code BOOSTER at betonline.ag and you get a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to $1,000. That's betonline.ag. Use promo code BOOSTER, B-O-O-S-T-E-R. That's what we use. That's what you need to use. That's what America uses. BetOnline, the options are endless, and so is the fun. All right, David. All right, Major League Baseball opening day. What if we just start in the AL East with, with Blaine's division over there? New York Yankees. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, and then I can tell you why the Orioles Yeah, are. I can't wait to be mediocre again. Mm. Um, Soto, he's not. That's not. Yeah, look, Juan, getting Juan Soto is obviously a great piece. Uh, I mean, Garrett Cole's already hurt. Shocker. Surprise, get, get surprise. Dylan John Carlos Santon couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat last year. But he's, hey, he's in new shape. I do like, I mean, they, they got depth at the pitch, pitching position. We'll see how the new shortstop plays. But I'm not expecting anything of the Yankees. I don't think they've done enough. The, Orioles, uh, yeah. one of three teams to win 100 games last year, I believe. Dogs. Yes, and also they are just a factory that pumps out, like, you know, just baseball prodigies. I mean, look at <laughs> Gunnar Henderson right now. Look at Jackson Holiday. Uh, some of the young talent they have. And, and I think they're coming in with, you know, I guess arrogance, you need a little bit of arrogance, especially in the sport of baseball. But it feels like the Orioles are coming in expecting 
to win, but they're not going to rest on their laurels. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's baseball. Soto's basically playing in a Little League park. Now over there in New York to the pull side, uh, you're going to get nothing but, but down and out. Like You might as well just put me on antidepressants because I'm just so down and out right now. Uh, when Soto's getting up there, yeah, give me the Orioles. AL Central, I mean, I hate it for our boy Ben Shapiro, but the White Sox were trash a season ago. Now they've traded Dylan Cease. I don't think it's going to get anything but worse. The only way to fix the White Sox is if Ben buys them. And moves Twins, here, baby. And we fix it. Our buddy Jack from Minnesota, they got off the schneid last year. Yeah, they did. 18 straight postgame losses, uh, or postseason losses. Uh, it's hard, tough to lose the postgame, too, but I've seen it happen. Uh, they, they got off the schneid. Not only with that, they won a series. Uh, they, they're hopefully going to be healthier this year. I mean, it, it felt like they were the walking wounded with, with Correa being hurt. I can go through the list, Buxton, all these guys. Uh, but it seems like they're healthier. The Twins are, are, are you know, they, here's the thing. Yeah, it takes a little bit of pressure off you when you break the streak like that. But now it's expected. Not only that, you won a series in the postseason. Now you're expected to go further. How do you handle those expectations now that you've kind of broken that that glass ceiling that feels like it's been up there forever? I don't know, man. I just like the way the Twins are put together. I feel like they're good enough uh, to be able to win it, but they don't have too many big egos to where it's it could fall apart really quickly. AL West, this is one of the most fun divisions in baseball. I mean, a season ago, this came down to the final game between the Astros, who've been very, very good for the last almost decade. And my new adopted team, the Texas Rangers, Astros end up winning that division, but the Rangers won the World Series. And neither one was my pick at the beginning of last season. I thought the Mariners had a good shot to win this division. You look, uh, the Athletics are in, are in that division as well, and so are the Angels, who just got rid of Shohei yeah. Otani. The Angels, I mean, I, I'm afraid Mike Trout doesn't even want to go to heaven because I mean, who wants to spend even more time with the Angels? They ruined that guy's career, and he's not the only one. I... I got to feel like the Astros are pissed, right? Like, the Rangers aren't sneaking anybody this year. No. And it was unbelievably impressive. I think the Rangers kind of reset the pitching market after, you know, they gave DeGrom half the gold in Texas. He pitches six games, gets hurt. Their ass still wins a World Series. That's why I think you saw Blake Snell, who won the Cy Young. And I know he's been inconsistent over his career, but that's why he got half the money that the previous AL Cy Young uh, winner got before him. I just think the, the Astros are going to be on kind of a revenge tour a little bit. They've been the big dog. They've sipped from the cup at the most. Uh, and the Rangers aren't going to sneak up on anybody this year. I like the Astros coming out of that division, but I like the Rangers to obviously make the It's funny season. you talk about pitchers. I saw this uh, graphic just this week. Highest paid, ma- highest paid Major League Baseball pitchers in 2024 and their status by opening day. Now, keep in mind, this was, I believe, posted a week and a half ago. Max Scherzer, $43 million, injured. Justin Verlander, $43 million, injured. Jacob deGrom, who you mentioned, $40 million, injured. Garrett Cole, $36 million, right now, injured. Steven Strasburg, $35 million, retired. And that didn't even count Shohei Otani, who's not pitching this year. Exactly. Because he was hurt. I mean, it's look, it's, it's, it's becoming a smarter and smarter business move not to give individual pitchers just all the gold in the vault. Because, again, it's been proven multiple times I mean, you play 162 game regular season, somebody's ass bound to get hurt, but we've seen teams win it without even having that top guy before it almost. I mean, we watched the it's, Braves win a World Series, not even talking about pitcher without Ronald Acuna Jr. Yep. It kind of reminds me of contracts with running backs in the NFL. A little bit, right? Like, yeah. You don't want to give a, a, a big contract to a running back because you know health wise it's going to get beat up through the entire year and you know who, don't know who that guy's going to be the second year. It's kind of the same thing with innings pitched when it comes to your starting pitchers. I don't think you should drop the bag for a starting pitcher, but there's no way I'm going to sit here and pick against the Astros. Yeah, I mean, I like is, is Bregman still on the Astros? Yeah. yeah. Is Cal Tucker still on the Astros? Altuve, Astros? all of them. Altuve, yeah. yeah. They've still got all the guys, and they got the pitching. I mean, Verlander, uh, uh, just a, a plethora of pitching. Their bullpen's deep. I know the Rangers aren't stinking anybody this year, but it's hard for me not to pick the Astros. I like that comp between the pitchers and the running backs because it wasn't that long ago in football you could hand, hand the ball off to the same running back all three downs. You give Emmett Smith the ball. He'd have 30 carries in a game. Couple play action pay him passes. a lot of money. He's integral to you winning or losing, right? Depending on the offensive line and who's playing quarterback and all that. Pitcher the same way. He has the ball in his hand every single play. It wasn't that far fetched well, for guys to go out there and throw complete games. Well, well, yeah. Now that, they're throwing four innings. That's exactly right. I mean, you got guys that are starters starting the game that aren't even starters. They're pitching three. Like guys are pitching bullpen. And you, you were never, already throwing once every yeah. four. Yeah. You five rarely minutes. see a guy ever get past the fifth. No. So, yeah. Especially now when you're throwing 97 mile per hour sliders. National League quickly, NL East. I don't think we really even need to talk about it. Braves have got that already locked up. But the question is can they win in the postseason? Yeah, I'm like this regular season just teasing me now. I'm sick of holding hands. I want to kiss. NL Central. And other stuff. Uh, NL Central. Cardinals kind of fell off last year. 
Uh, I mean, you got the Brewers in that division. Well, the Cubs went and got the Cubs. Young. Cubs got some pieces. Cubs, now. Well, Cubs, they do, they do but they also you know took the Brewers, took counsel, the the manager. The Reds um, in that division. The Reds last year went 82 and 80. Yeah. Surprised everybody. I mean, I was the one after they lost their first game, put up the graphic that they've been eliminated from the playoffs. All they did was, you know, go, uh, I guess, 80, 82 and, and 80, or 82 and 79 after that, which, you know, shocked a lot of people. They, they've made some moves and some adjustments. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, Ellie De La Cruz, like some of these guys that they have are, are really fun to watch. I just, man, it feels like the time for the Cubs kind of get back a little bit. Um, you know, I like how young they are. It, you know, I like Crow. I think he's going to be a guy, you know, in the future that you're going to, you know, see some other guys really have to move around. But it should be one of the more interesting divisions from a competitive standpoint. Not saying that a team's going to win the World Series out of it, but from a top to bottom, I do feel like that one is one of the less, that there's not as big of a spectrum in difference from the top to the bottom. But I'm going to go with the Cubs. I like that. NL West, another one of those divisions where the Dodgers won that a, a year ago, but then lost to the Diamondbacks in the postseason, who went all the way to the World Series. Well, until the and look, I know the Dodgers have made all these moves, and you know Shohei, regardless of what his interpreter says, is out there trying to do his thing, and they deferred six hundred eighty million of that. I just think we're going to see the same movie again. I, it's not like the Dodgers haven't had really good players like this whole time. They just keep adding really good players. But I think you're going to win the division. Don't think you're going to make it the World Series. And I think Dave Roberts is gone mm. after they don't. How about you? I think this is the year for the Dodgers. To win it all. To win it all. I think well, this is, you're, you're too wrong. talented. I know they've been like that the last couple of years, but sooner or later you get that many, many good players on a baseball field, you got to win it. I mean, you added Shohei. I mean, when Shohei I mean, you got Mookie Betts, near Freddie. Mookie Betts in the on-deck circle and it says Otani Betts, the, the writing's exactly. on the wall, right? Yeah. That, Did you hear the news today, though, about Pete Rose? Pete, Pete Rose he should hired, have been in. Pete Rose, Rose hired, hired an interpreter. He hired an interpreter. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. should let him in. Solves all the issues. Uh, for sure. It's, yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. But no, excited for opening day. Your fees, nerfies, and nerfies, all the nerfies, nerfies. All right, boys, you want some reactions? I do, but, uh, you know, first, David, first, I want to react to this. Tell me. All right. All you people out there that, that made those New Year's resolutions, hey, I'm going to work out more. I'm going to find the best way to work out. Maybe you started, and maybe you just fell off the wagon. All right. Maybe you didn't. Maybe your your workouts have plateaued. Maybe you're getting bored. Well, that's why you need Fitbod, Blaine. That's yeah. why you need it. What is Fitbod? Well, David, it's an app that creates personalized workouts based on your goals, abilities, gym setup, and helps you track and visualize okay. your progress along the way. It learns from your previous workouts and it adapts as you improve. And it also switch up your exercises. You got to keep the body guessing. We don't want overtraining. All right, and we don't want burnout. We want those workouts to be fresh, fun. The Febreze Brothers, it's a fresh start. Go in there and attack the day. We used Fitbod to help lose weight, so we looked unbelievably great like we did in Lady Ballers and like we still do now. It helps keep it off. And you can learn new movements the right way with over 1,400 HD demonstration videos. Kapow! Plus, a full year of Fitbod is less than a cost of a single session with a personal trainer. So you don't even have to talk to anybody. So add Fitbod to your workout essentials today. Join FitBod to get your personalized workout plan and get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash booster. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot me slash booster. Get lean fast and feel better even faster. FitBod, your bod, super fit. FitBod, no. not dad bod. Fit, no. Don't no, embrace say, mediocrity. Nothing wrong with a dad bod. Don't embrace mediocrity. Kick it off your lawn. Yeah. All right? That's, that's what you do. Nothing that's exactly right. Dad bod. All right, David, what are we reacting? By the way, shout out Booster Club. Y'all know what's up. We love y'all. All right, love first one up. Let's pull up this hockey clip. This is clip number one here. Uh, hockey video game. Uh, this is from our, our friend over there at Libs of TikTok. It won't let you uh, create a team named Team Trump because that contains profanity as the game says. But you uh, can create Team Biden. In no game. way. Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize things, how much man. wokeness are in video games. It's the it's, little things, though, man. If you've played NBA 2K, okay. um, there's this thing on It's like a park. You can ride around the city. You play basketball and a bunch of stuff. But they have BLM all over it. You can go to BL, BLM meetings in NBA 2K. Do they have the MAGA section? Wait, you can no. go to BLM meetings? You can go to BLM meetings no in the game. On the video game? On the video game. I don't game. believe you. No way. 
NBA 2K. No way. You can be, hey, you can sit there and be hooping it in the streets and then go to a BLM meeting. And learn about how terrible the Wyatts are. Well, it's, that one's a hockey game, so. Oh, it's well, everything. They do that. They sense. sell, you can wear shirts. Like, you go you go to a store and buy apparel in the game, you can wear BLM Well, it's like shirts. the little Shopify, sneaky Shopify, at least, with our like promo that. code. Hit that it's sound, like, is that like the subconscious stuff? Like, they just take enough of it away where you just like, or it's, it's like Derek Zoolander, then you start hearing relax, and you're like, relax. Don't you want to just kill the Malaysian? They, they, it's the I can't breathe shirt. Yeah, like wow. they're out there and I, that's why, you know, yeah, you can't breathe because I made a seven foot monster and I'm putting my balls in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why. Wow. Gonna, wow Alrighty hockey. then. All right. All right. <laughs> we were talking about Illinois in the Sweet 16. How about this clip of Illinois? This is clip number two here. I guess Illinois has a, a very specific post game press conference routine. I don't understand it fully. Can we play Stay it? Here. Okay. They're all standing up. And they all shift over at the same time. There Shake we go. Hands. Handshake. Fix hands the chairs. The chair. Look, I get the OCD then part they, of it. But, oh, now we're going the other they leave way. the other way. Well, it looks like Joe Biden leaving the president. What's going on that? You still taking Illinois or are you taking Iowa State? I'm taking Illinois, and here's the real question. Um, the real question is going to turn your phone down or what? Well, nobody nobody heard that. That's the real question. Nobody heard that. Pavel! No, nobody heard that. Yell at this you're, man! Yes. What you're talking about. That makes me believe in him even more. Yes, I We're was that agree. connected. The antics. We're that connected? Yeah. That's why, like, we always say, too, like, you know, in baseball, the more, say it, to be son. honest, the gayer the, the better. The gayer the better. Well, I was going to say they're real dialed in, but y'all got a whole nother thing. That's why no, Caleb Williams is getting picked first. There needs to be first. butts getting slapped. Right, guys, looking each other in the eyes. I can't get on board with the Caleb Williams. <laughs> Caleb Williams. Well, that's awesome. different. That's an individual. That's individualized. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about somebody putting on, you know, like a, like dressing up in like like Chiquita banana yeah. costume and running it's, around yeah. and all that stuff. What I'm saying is, when you're together, when we're doing handshakes where we're looking at each other, yeah. There's belts, belts on butts. Why don't, uh, yeah, yeah, hey, belts, tapping, belts on butts for me used to be. We're from, tapping nuts I, and butts, baby. Yeah, when I, when I got in trouble bees. with my father. Now ins it's just. Look, bees. there's nothing more scary than going on a baseball field and watching the other team slap each other in the ass. And, yeah, ins and bees equal dubs. Everybody out there knows what I'm talking about. That makes me feel better about Illinois. God, this, now I don't want to like kiss This is getting worse and worse. This is getting worse. But and that's worse. the line right there. How about clip number three? The greatest wiffle ball pitches of 2023. Oh, I, I want to be in this. this. I, I want to announce it. I want to be in this yeah, league. In Let's here. play it. Because I'm destroying this. Oh, You're not that's hitting gone. That. You're oh. not hitting that. Oh, oh look dude, that's that. gone. I'm hitting that's that over gone. the woods. No, nah, I'm not touching that. <laughs> nah. That's getting crushed. Strike that's going to be tough. Where are you <laughs> going? Why are you, why are you turning your back for a wiffle? I wonder what type of balls, <laughs> that's like wiffle balls those are. Like if there's, Come I, I'm going to see not the ball. That. I'm crushing that. Some of these I'm not hitting. The other ones I'm crushing. I want it. Why are we not playing in that? We need a team. As now. a grown man, why are we not playing that? I need to go get the guys back from the neighborhood that we used to play in, get the band back together. All right. And we need to go play. They're out there. I'm down. I've always wanted to play in this wiffle ball league. Not only play, but I want to announce it. The announcing's almost the, the announcing best part. would be great. It's that all over TikTok. It's now. hilarious the way they announce. How would you announce that right there? Can we pull it back? Play, up? Play, yeah, play, play, play that back clip up? real quick. I, I've got to hear this. Tony Johnson on the mound. He comes to step it up. We have a white bat of hair with a yellow bat. That's Ricky Henderson. Down in the curveball. Strike three of the hook. The banana hitter. The banana the nuts and butts, boys. High numbers, knuckleball. Timmy Wake, slide piece on my elbow. I can feel it. Mm. These Mute. kids are on steroids. Mute. That hurts. Unmute. Yeah. And we're back Shut with the drop. That's a curveball. Oh, God. I'm killing all that. Coming from a softball MVP you're out. in my intramural league. Hashtag, you're this out. Is getting, that's getting crushed. You also crushed. tore your Achilles in an intramural That's a look. That's a, my body couldn't keep up with how fast I was running. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what happened. All right, next one. Up. While we're on baseball, pull up clip number five, please. Have you guys ever seen a baseball traveling at 1,000 mph? 1,000 miles an hour Blake here. Bortles, brother. Look at one. what this baseball does. To all of these gloves. I don't know how many gloves they set up. So this up, is coming at 1,000 miles an hour. 1,000 miles an hour. Super slow motion right here. Oh, my God. Look at that. So basically, every time Aaron Judge hits a line drive. Your hand's gone. Okay, so think about this. The exit velo of some of the, the 
fastest baseballs that get out of the yard are like what, 120? 120. Yeah, about 120. That's going a thousand. So that's thousand. almost 10 times that. God, how cool is that, right? Wouldn't it would just be cool <laughs> if guys see, this... can somewhat throw that hard? No, no, it, I how don't cool want to would it be? Die. That just took how out 10 How cool would it be, gloves. baseball? I'm not talking about a thousand miles per hour. Obviously not. It's 900, right? 107? 108? We see that. Against a bunch. That was no one. We're talking about off the bat. We're talking about off the bat. Yeah, I'm talking about off the bat as well. You know how fast that's going to come off the bat? There's some that come off the bat. Juice the pitchers, juice the hitters. Let's see how fast we can throw it and how far we can hit it. You want to bring baseball back? I'm giving you the keys to the city. Take them. You're welcome. I just don't want to see Matt Chapman playing third and somebody hits a ball 500 miles per hour that goes through him (laughs) and he dies right there. Like you thought it was, you thought DeMar Hamlin was bad? Okay. Let somebody shoot a Dragon Ball Z through one of these surveys. Look, sometimes there's humor. Hey, Hugan! Now you're announcing. Yeah. Do we have the uh, the pool shot, the pool break uh, video? Yeah, let's play this. What is it? What witchery so this is this? is a pool break. I did this the other day. There just weren't any cameras around, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, so like... What? Look That's that. the most satisfying thing I've ever watched How? in my life. No. Boredom. How? Camera trick. Boredom. That's okay. definitely going in. Camera. T- Ooh. How are you All doing right. that off the break? Well, it's like why is the why is why is Nick Fury walking like behind me trying to recruit me to something after that? Like, you know what the is wildest that something part? that he Play can it again. create? Play it again. Here's yeah, the wildest part. Time. Look at this guy. He knows he knows when they're all going in. Watch him. Watch him. So there is right here. Walks away. He knew it there. That's got to be able to be recreated. Go touch some grass, my guy. I don't know what a, I think what a he's, power. He's got a good thing going. God, I don't know how you know far. How much he can money go. you could win in tournaments if you could just? He's got a need. Yeah, like thirty dollars. Thirty-seven. Well, playing thirty thousand tournaments. Do the math. That's a lot of tourneys. That's a lot of dollars. Interesting. It takes a lot of skill to that'll play pool. The, that'll it be really the most does. Watch sport pretty soon after the NFL changes all their rules. Well, that'll be more physical. Huh? Like, but then they'll put rules like, hey, you can't let the ball touch the stick. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Do we have a? Do we have that one video that that I sent in the guys? Do th- <gasps> what is this? Hold on. The what dating videos from the eighties. Yeah. Is videos. this really from the eighties? This or is really this from the eighties. Is this actually a, a video killer? of serial killers? You don't even killers killers have to. Yeah, like here, I found them. Play this. Hi, my name's Mike, and if you're sitting there watching this tape, smoking your cigarette, well, hit the fast forward button because I don't smoke, and I don't like people <laughs> who do smoke. What's in his I'm basement? not afraid to get sand on my tuxedo. If you're not afraid to let the wind mess your hair up a little bit when I take the top down. <laughs> what does that, that even mean? Some champagne and candles. Serious? Yeah. Is this real, Hi, mom? Oh God, oh, serial killer. Is this real? Yes. In the 80s. I do fashion photography, and I do oh, consider God. myself a refined valley dude. Oh, my no way. Way. I'm looking for a trendy girl with a <laughs> simple smile. Yeah, you are. Smile. Oh, says here. oh excuse me. Yeah, you, if you got to read it, buddy. What I'm looking for is uh, some big, overgrown monster that's always <laughs> thinking about food. And- <laughs> no way. No, me neither. Things don't change. Death, it's winged life destroy. Um, I like yeah, brother, you're too uh, late. Do a lot of sailing. I like to outdoor activities. I like climbing. I like travel. I took a sponge ball. I was pulling him out of a little girl's ear. Vivacious. Oh my God. What? In what? I'm looking for the goddess. Are you the what? goddess? Who is the goddess? The goddess is the woman. Is a woman? Is any woman? Is all any women. woman? A figure that is sexy. He's definitely been in a type, band before. Excellent legs. Why, is Why are you Vera? reading? I'm really looking for somebody I can feel special about. <laughs> and I don't encounter people like that very often. And I'm hoping yeah, you're, you're going to be yeah, alone. You're, like you're going to be alone forever. I see, bet you don't. See, like, I wonder if that forever. ever, like, works. <coughs> if that ever works. We but need like to this, figure out if some if some if one of those guys is still married from someone he met on the We show. do need to find That's out. That's I, I know an easy way to track them down. You just Google serial killers from the 80s, and at least 60% of the guys are on that list. That's wild. Where'd you find that? So I just saw it on social media. Yeah. Yeah, my what dad. What dark on. internet are you on? <laughs> the dark web, Jeez, man. dude. <laughs> yeah, it was in P. Diddy's house. I bet you were. Wow. No, I you wasn't. Heard it, you heard it there. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't. Jake's hanging out with O.P. Diddler. Caleb Williams rocking these week one. Yeah. Oh, are those Caleb's cleats? Yeah. They're heels. Wow. Bud Light sponsor incoming. Yes. Let me put my thoughts in you. That's insane. Hmm. We have more. Do we have more of the cleats? 
Yeah. Oh, God, they're playing, but, um, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, something's Caleb's up. Fleets. Something's weird. And those low-key fire. I'll tell you, See, I'm now to... you're like Blaine slowly turning. I, I wouldn't be mad if my girl wore, wore those. Oh, your girl? girl? I thought you were talking about, yeah, your girl. I don't hear you were just at P Diddy's house, dude. What are you That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Hanging out with P Diddy. That's not what I said. You said you found it in P Diddy's house. Yeah, that's not what I said. Yeah, you used to dress up like Peter Pan and run around there. No, hey, don't make this about me. Williams after he sneaks into the end zone on a five-yard scramble to put the Bears down. I don't want to watch twenty four. That's it. Oh, oh, we my, scored. Oh, my God. The Bears God. scored. It's like there's, I can't. At that point, man, tr- a, get a, Justin a, Fields a, back. Why am I watching okay this? Now. Why I'm am okay I now. watching this? <laughs> anyway, sports. Yeah, if I'm China, I'm in, the minute that video drops, I'm invading. It's working, China. They're like, don't worry. We're going to twerk you guys out of here. They're like, hey, can we send in the, they're just like, hey, guys, are we going to send in the 101st Airborne? They're like, no, send in the twerkers. They'll get them. Like the what dog jack? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the twerkers. What is this? Center squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Dude, the Caleb Williams memes are endless. They're just endless. That's really the, 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 probably how he's going to feel. I, look, at this point. Someone put out a, 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 a post that said, so many NFL fans are upset about Caleb Williams having lip gloss and a pink phone and a pink wallet. Uh, just let the kid be himself. I'm like, upset? Packers fans are thrilled. Yeah, dog, yeah. Get off Dylan Mulvaney's Twitter. Yeah. Packer, like, Ly- Lions Williams fans are, are loving this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we appreciate you guys joining us. We are live tomorrow morning. Go ahead. Does it make it worse? All right. If he just... If he- if he is gay, but then comes out and just beats the shit out of your team. Oh, he's, well, yeah, it's like, it's like what he used to say. It, it's like, it's like you, had people, you had people back home that were afraid of getting beat up. They had these, they call them sissy, sissy gangs. gangs. Oh, the sissy gangs. The sissy gangs. Like, you'd have, like, gangs, like, <laughs> six to eight huge jack guys wearing dresses. And if you made fun of them, they just beat the, beat the hell out of you. We like, what are you going to, like... We don't have that down in Franklin, thank now, you. Now, ah, you going to tell? There's I, no coming back from that. No, like you had the, <laughs> you had the reversers. That's what that was one like. of the games. Oh, man. That yeah. video is, a, ugh. It was, yeah. You ever get beat up by a sissy gang? I have Guess not. who you don't tell? Anyone. <laughs> you don't make fun of me either. You're going to find out. Yeah. You want to talk, oh, man. talk about assimilation. All right, we appreciate y'all. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Live tomorrow. Enjoy the Sweet 16 games. We're going to have the preview for tomorrow's and going to be talking everything that happened in day one of opening day. Shout out to the Booster Club. We're going home, y'all. But, but not really. And like the chances of us not having fun at the Alabama-North Carolina game, we're going, going, gone.